see what the Bible has to say about uh, certain things and we are up to John chapter 8 in the Gospels we are going chronologically through the Gospels so John chapter 8 and we're going to start around um, around verse 29 and then uh, yeah we're going to do that okay we're going to have a word of prayer first and then we're going to have a look at a few things here let's pray our Father in heaven, again we give thanks, Lord. We thank you for this time to look into the Bible, to look into your word, and we thank you for it, Lord. And we need your, your help. We need, your, dear Holy Spirit, you to guide us, to help us, to help us understand these things and apply these things to our own lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for these things that you did that are written down for us to study. And we just thank you, Lord, for your grace. And we thank you now for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so you know what's happening in John chapter 8. We're getting through, not getting through it very quickly. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, things here. We back up. We remember that at the beginning of it, the Lord Jesus is teaching the people in the temple. And at one point it tells us that he's in the, in the treasury, which is in the women's court here. Okay, in this area was the treasury. <clears throat> Pharisees came in with a woman caught in adultery, and then they tried to trip the Lord Jesus up. You know, but Moses' uh, law says that she should be stoned, but they left something out, didn't they? They left out the fact that there was two people involved, and that both of them were supposed to be brought before uh, the, uh, the uh, elders and so on and so forth for this to uh, take place. But remember, the Lord Jesus is coming along. He's upon the scene here, and God had given them the, the laws and all those things. And somebody said, I think there's 613 Levitical laws or something, all things that they had to do. There's a lot of stuff. Um, but when the Lord Jesus came upon the scene, he said, I have not come to, uh, 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 he's not doing away with the law, but then he says, it will stand, and, uh, not one jot or tittle shall uh, be removed uh, until all is fulfilled. But he seems like he's kind of just refining it a bit. Like when he talked about in Matthew chapter 5 to 7, the Sermon on the Mount, or yeah, Matthew 5 to 7, the Sermon on the Mount, he talked about, um, you have heard it said, uh, uh, to them of old time, thou shalt not, and then uh, it was from the commandments, and then he would, what I call it, like, uh, not redefining it, but just kind of sharpening it a bit. For instance, thou shalt not kill, and he says, even if you have a um, hatred in your heart towards your brother, he says, you're in a bad place, you're in that place. He said, as far as adultery, he says, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. So you see, the Lord Jesus came along, not to do away with it, but he's just sharpening it. There seems to be there's more of a responsibility under this time of grace. That's a whole other uh, uh, thing for us to talk about. And But we have here, and he would teach the people, and they keep interrupting him with stuff. Um, uh, he told them, last week we looked at where he told them, except you believe that I am. Now, I know that it says, I am he in your Bible, but the he is in italics. Okay, that was added in there uh, to give a sense of something, but I think uh, whoever did that made a little bit of an error in that sense because Jesus said, I am. Mm -hmm. I am the I am. It's a declaration of deity. Okay? So they knew full well, and they were told right by him, and from the Lord himself, this is God manifest in the flesh standing there, or sitting, I, I think he sat a lot of the times when he was teaching, but he said, I am, except you believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. A lot of people think he's a, a, a good man, a, a, a good prophet, a good king, and all these things. And indeed, he says, unless you understand and you see that I am, the I am, God Almighty, Jehovah, the Almighty God has stepped out of heaven. And there he is. He says, except you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. Jesus Christ his deity, okay? Amen. So he, he said that to them, and they asked him, says, well, where are you from? And then he says, I told you from the beginning. And they understood not. And he said, uh, verse 28, we left it off, when, when, he, when they crucify him, he says, when you put me on the cross, then you're going to understand. And then we look back in, uh, um, in the book of Matthew, chapter 27, and saw the soldiers 
when Jesus died on the cross, they understood. And I wonder, perhaps, some of these Pharisees and, and uh, uh, scribes and that may have been there too, and maybe they were with that same group that believed, because there were some miraculous things took place. But we're up to verse 29, and continuing on in the account that we have before us. And he that sent me is with me. So they asked him, well, who are you? You know, there was, you have to have two witnesses, because he declared himself to be... Um, uh, sent from God, and uh, he says that he said that the Father is with me. He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. Now let's just think about that one and talk about that for a minute. He that sent me is with me. You say God is with me. Well, where was he? Well, he was right there. He was. This is the God Man. This is the 100% perfect man yet without sin, and 100% God standing there before them. God manifest in the flesh. Sometimes take that little bit and meditate upon that and just think about that. That's an amazing thing. They stood there and uh, denied it. Well, we'll see what takes place here. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. Now that made me think of something. We read our Bibles, we see the interpretation was that Jesus was talking to the people there, but the applications we must make to ourselves and for ourselves, okay? He hath not left me alone. You ever feel alone and feel sometimes that you just uh, don't, you know, you get doing stupid things or you feel sorry for yourself or whatever, you know, and you feel that, boy, oh boy, did I ever mess up? Don't put your hand up. Uh, well, maybe you should, so I don't feel alone. <laughs> but uh, he says, the Father has not left me alone, but he's always with us. Hebrews 13, 5, what does it say? The Lord says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now that word forsake means to let go and turn your back on. I will never do that. I will never do that. Because remember, back in Luke 22, I think, yeah, Luke, Luke 22, Jesus at the, at the Last Supper, as we call it, he, he says, this is the covenant that I make with you in my blood. Okay, This is different from the Old Testament covenant. It's because in our Bibles divided up into two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. That word testament means covenant. You have the Old Covenant and the, the New Covenant. The Old Covenant depended somewhat on their behavior. If you do this, I will bless you. But in the New Covenant, the New Testament, Jesus Christ says, this is the covenant that I make with you in my blood. But all that will believe in Him and trust in Him and take Him as Savior, He says, I will look after you. I am responsible for you. I will keep you. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? Yeah. is I will never leave you no matter what takes place no matter what you could do you will never be left by Jesus Christ Amen, Amen. Amen. He says for I for I do always those things that please Him we could never say that mm -hmm. there's no person on the face of the earth that's ever been ever will be or ever or is that could say before God I do everything that pleases God. Everything I do pleases God. Jesus Christ could say that because He's the Lord Himself. Okay? This is not just, He's not the same as that. He did not have that old nature that we have, which is a bent towards sin and so on and so forth, and rebellion towards God. Nobody else can, uh, can say that. I have a couple of verses I want to just uh, to read to you. When we think about this, um, I was thinking about that very thing. Sometimes we do fall, and sometimes we falter. And in Psalm 37, it tells us this in verse 23, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. When you're a believer, when you're born again, when you're, when you're a, a true born-again Christian, washed in the blood of the Lamb, you might fall, and you might stumble, and you probably will. Not to say that we should look to that. We've been given the Holy Spirit to indwell in us to help us with those things and overcome those things. But he says here, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Why? Because I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. He says you'll be held, held up by his hand. And I think the Lord holds our hands, does he not? Amen. He says, you're mine, I'm hanging on to you. And I, that picture comes in my mind way back, way back. One time, Robin and I were crossing the main street in Durham. We lived there. 
we had, we were looking after my little brother Steve, he was about eight years old at the time. I remember crossing the road, and I don't know why, it just stuck with me. Take, I think he held both our hands, and I, I, I can't remember, but to take him and walk him across the street because it was busy, busy street. And I think of that when I read this kind of thing. The Lord says, I'm holding you. Nothing's going to happen to you. I've got you. You're secure. I will look out for you because this covenant is in my blood, he says. And that's why we take the Lord's table. We have that to remember what Jesus has said, what Jesus has done. Yes. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. For I do always those things that please him. Verse 30. As he spake these words, so as you picture it now, as Jesus is talking and teaching the people, as he was talking, it says many believed on him. Isn't that an amazing thing? Mm. Eh? Many believed on him. Okay? Now let's just look at that belief for a moment. It's a verb and expresses an action. Okay? It's, not a, it's not a static thing, it's a dynamic thing. <laughs> you have in the Bible, you have belief, you have trust, you have faith to receive. When we talk of faith, and people say, well, I have faith. Faith has an object, it has to be in something. It must be in Jesus Christ. Amen. To believe also means to be persuaded. In other words, to be convinced. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? And hence, to place confidence. Confidence means to feel sure or feel secure. Confidence in uh, to trust, uh, which signifies a reliance upon. You hear those words there? A persuaded, confidence, reliance. You rely on Him. If you're not relying on God Almighty on, through Jesus Christ, something's wrong. We might rely upon ourselves, our own strengths, or whatever, but it must be upon Him. To believe in Him means to trust in Him, is to rely upon Him, to have confidence in Him. To believe in Him from your heart, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, I think it is. To rely upon Him. But now these characters here that were standing there, uh, we, we're not sure... He says many believed. We aren't sure if this was part of the Pharisee crowd there or the people that were being taught. I think it hints to that a little as we go on a little further. We want to just hold that thought for a minute and many believed on him and just look at the flip side of that coin. There are different kinds of belief, you know. Because the Bible talks about another Jesus, another gospel. Okay? I was talking to a fellow the other day. And uh, he, he said he believed in Jesus, and he seemed to be quite genuine about that, but he thought that um, the speaking in tongues was the, the sign of that. Mm. So I would just like to say to people, you know, you're, you're believing in Jesus Christ? Yeah. In Jesus Christ alone, nothing else? Because oftentimes you have other things added, right? Mm -hmm. People say, well, I'm a good person. I knock on doors. I was baptized. And on and on and on it goes. It's Jesus Christ plus nothing. Amen. It's nothing else. You cannot have your, your sin and your Savior. It's nothing that we do. There's nothing we could do. And there are different kinds of belief. Do you know the Bible tells us in James chapter 2, verse 19, it says the devils believe and tremble. Let's just think about that for a minute. The devils believe. What do they believe? They believe and understand who Jesus Christ is. They know who He is. When He came to the, uh, the Gadarene demoniac, and, and did they not say, why have you come to torment us? Was it them who said that? Mm -hmm. They know. Yeah. They know who this is. I think they only have the knowledge that we would say, like the head knowledge. Yeah. There's something missing in the heart. Perhaps that's what it is. But whatever it is, um, he says, the devils believe and tremble. That word tremble means to shudder, to shake. Does anything make you shake and shudder? I was probably something that makes... I was going to say snakes for me. 
Okay, I don't like them. All right, they make me shudder. Anyway, Paris is smiling, big smile. <laughs> Anyways, but they, they, at the thought of God Almighty, at the presence of God, these beings that are higher than humans, these are demonic beings, beings, fallen angels, they shudder and tremble at the thought of God and the thought of what's going to happen. But I think at the very presence of God, their knees are knocking. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. It's one thing this world needs is fear of God. Mm -hmm. okay. There's no redemption for them. You see, when God made the angels... He made them like each one is separate, a separate individual kind of thing. Okay? We are a race of beings that out of Adam came the rest of us. Angels don't procreate. They don't make more angels. God made them. There's no salvation for them. You'd have to have a, a savior that would pay for their sins for each and every one. It's not going to happen. It doesn't happen. It's not part of God's plan. He says that the hell itself he made for the devil and his angels. And there's no redemption for them. There's no redemption at all. It's kind of a sad thing really, isn't it? No. But aren't you glad that there is redemption for Amen. people? For people? Mm. Yes. So, we note that there are different kinds of belief. What kind of belief that they have? Well, let's just get back to this verse 30. And, he, and as he spake these words, many believed on him. Now, um, then Jesus said unto those Jews which believed on him, if you continue, and so on and so forth. But I want you just to flip over to verse 41 just for a moment. And we're going to look at... Uh, what Jesus said to these individuals that believed in him. He has to put his finger on something. Like the woman at the well, uh, Jesus put his finger on the problem of her sin, which was that she had many husbands and such. Eh? But Jesus speaks to those that believed. And in verse 41, he says, uh, in Jesus, uh, where, 41, Ye do the deeds of your father. And they said to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. Wait a minute. Jesus is putting their finger on his finger on a problem here. He said, "You're in the wrong place, fellas." And they call him an illegitimately child, illegitimate, illegitimately born child. That's what they said. They called him. They said, "You're you're you're a bastard child." But their God, their Father, is God. And if you look at verse 44, he says, ye are, of, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. So they tried to kill him. They wanted to kill him. So there's a belief there, but there's something missing in that belief. What's missing there? There's a total repentance of sin. An absolute total repentance of sin. Jesus tries to help them, to show them. He wasn't making fun of them. He wants to help them. God is not willing that any should perish. That's right. He's not, uh, he may be berating them, but it's for their own good to show them that these things are wrong in your life. These things are wrong. And you go to verse 59, and they're picking up stones and throwing at him. What kind of belief is that? I don't want that. Do you want that? If people have, what, kind, what kind of belief is this? And people have these uh, um, sort of belief systems. The Bible tells us that in Acts chapter 20, verse 21, talks about repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. It's Acts 20 and 21. Their belief was not mixed with repentance of sin. It was not saving faith. These ones, they believed. Okay? And there's people today that believe this, that, and the other thing, and again, add it to Christ. I was baptized. I'm a good person. I did this. I do this. Or whatever. Like that one fellow, uh, 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 it was really an interesting one on the internet. Uh, he said that if you add anything at all, and if you add the word I in there, you've got a problem. You don't understand. Did you get saved? Yes, I did. Jesus Christ did. Mm -hmm. eh? 
Jesus Christ, God Almighty, went to the cross of Calvary for your sins. You did nothing but believe when the Spirit of God opened your mind and showed you these things. Amen. They're throwing stones at Jesus. What kind of belief is this? It's a belief that was not mixed with repentance of sin. It was empty. It was the kind of belief you see in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. And this is sad, sad, sad. In Matthew 7, 21, we read, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord. Now Jesus is talking like the end time, or the, like the judgment. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, and this is Jesus Christ, the Lord himself, speaking and saying, many are going to say to him in that day, that day of judgment, when everybody will be standing before him to give account of themselves and so on and so forth, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we three things, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. See, they're dependent upon what they have done. Mm -hmm. And they've gone through their whole life sincerely thinking that they were fine. When they're not fine. Because they added something to that. They refused to see themselves as sinners before God Almighty. They saw what they could do to earn something from God. And in verse 23, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now that's what Jesus says is one of the scenes that will be at the judgment. When he's going to say, I didn't know, I don't know you. See, there's only one way to Jesus Christ, and that's to see ourselves as sinners undone before God Almighty. Amen. You see yourself as a sinner first of all. Amen? Amen. You see yourself. I know that I sin. I have this sinful nature that causes me to sin. I've got a problem. There's a big problem. That's why He went to the cross for us to pay for our sins. Amen. That's why He rose from the dead to show that it was, it was done. Amen. You must see your sin and yourself as a sinner. And you must see Jesus Christ as the Savior. The one and only Savior. The only one that can save your soul, God Almighty, that gave Himself for you and for me. Amen. And for everybody. Amen? Amen. What kind of belief do the devils have when they tremble? Different kinds of belief, but this one is empty. The kind that is in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. And also in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and in verse 3, it talks about the end of things and such. That they're going to be, um, the Lord's talking about in that, or the Spirit of God is talking about in that portion of Scripture, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, that before Jesus Christ comes in the clouds, two things must happen. There must be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed. And I thought, a falling away, let's just stop and think about that for a minute. What are people going to be falling away from? From God. That means that there's people all around now that are sincere in their religious behaviors and what they think they believe and everything else but there's a really big problem how could a born-again Christian fall away he can't you can't fall away God will keep you it's his responsibility he's holding your hand you're not going anywhere Amen. you might have some bad times and stuff I think it, it refers to what we've just been talking about that kind of belief that the trip the, the devils believe and tremble about the same kind of belief that the ones in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. He says, depart from me. And the falling away, he shows us many times through the Bible that this is a dangerous, dangerous thing. That there's many kinds of isms and beliefs and such. And people think they're all right. And then he tells us, examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. Because there are people that they're so sincere, they're locked into their religion or whatever. And they're told, yeah, this is the way, this is the way. But it doesn't line up with Scripture. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus Christ alone. Mm -hmm. See yourself as that sinner, the one He came to die on the cross for. What kind of belief is this? Head knowledge only. No real repentance from the heart. But saving faith. True, biblical belief. Sees the sin. And seize the Savior from your heart. Amen.
we have to stop right there. And time's gone from us. But just some things for us to think about. That's all. Let's pray. Our Father, we just would like to thank you now, Lord. We thank you for your word. We pray that you take these things and encourage us, and strengthen us. And Lord, if any that are listening to these things, Lord, and maybe caught in some kind of a belief system that adds something to Jesus Christ, adds something to your grace, Lord, that they would see that it's wrong. And it does not lead to heaven, but to hell. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the word of God Amen. and the spirit of God to show us what it means. So Lord, we thank you for all things now. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll stop there, folks. Thanks, folks. Uh, you take care. We'll see you next time. Bye now.